Einstein's Field Equations, The Inside Story, Episode 1. Welcome everybody to this very special uh, program of understanding Einstein's Field Equations. In this particular video, I would be laying down the objectives of the program. The first objective is to get a basic understanding of what is Einstein's field equations. The second is to get an idea on general theory of relativity. Well, as we all know that the idea, the central idea of general theory of relativity or GTR revolves around understanding of Einstein's field equations. So both of the first and the second points are interlinked. To understand the components of EFE or Einstein's field equations and their mathematical implications, as you can see right on the right hand side corner of the screen, the entire Einstein's field equation is written. Our basic idea of this entire series of video is to understand each and every components of this particular equation. As you can see, it is. I am not saying that it is equation, rather these are equations because we will soon notice that it is a collection of 16 partial differential equations out of this few of them are common. So we need to understand each and every component of Einstein's field equations. To understand the limitations of special theory of relativity because at some po point of time when Einstein felt that special theory of relativity is something very special that means it is limited to certain constraints and mathematical formulations he went forward to generalize the special theory of relativity and therein we got the general theory of relativity. So we will understand what are the limitations, what are the problems which restricted special theory of relativity and thereby the formulations of general theory came into the process. Yes, we need to also know the contributors of general theory relativity. By this point, what I'm trying to tell you is that it is not alone Albert Einstein who formulated this entire equation, which is quite complicated and heavy in terms of understanding to the physics lover or the students. So we will also took a leap forward to understand the contributors of general theory and who made it all possible. Please note that we are not going for any derivation. By this point, what I'm trying to tell you is that we are not going forward to derive method mathematically the Ricci curvature tensor or any particular uh, mathematical formulation. It would be a little bit lengthy or it would be too mathematical. In that case, people might lose interest. We are going to take it as it is. But however, we will go get into more mathematical derivations and implications. We assume those who are viewing this particular video has got a basic knowledge of calculus. By basic calculus, I mean that you know differential, partial differentiation and, and integration. You have a basic idea of classical and Newtonian mechanics. You also know what is a geometry, that is the basic Euclidean geometry and a basic idea on the curved surface which are called manifold. You also know what are tensors, calculus and vectors. If you have not looked into it, you can uh, look into the description box where I have given a link on my video uh, series on tensor calculus. So these are the basic presumptions based on which we will go forward in this video series. Please note that it would be intense and quite complicated and it would evolve, involve new concepts in mathematics. There will be shift in the process of traditional thinking. Uh, by this point, what I'm trying to tell you is that it won't be a basic process in which you think the mathematics and physics. There will be an entire shift in the process of the way we used to think. The general notion of Euclidean geometry would no longer be valid uh, on the screen. As you can see that I have given three uh, uh, pictures, the one on a sphere, the one on a rectangle and another in a different uh, manifold. So uh, the new notion of Euclidean geometry that the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees or whatever be the formulas, it won't be valid because we are moving to a different kind of a phase. So uh, we will take a different notion of Euclidean geometry. 
there will be a sea change in the process of thinking mathematical and notions and symbols what i'm trying to tell you is that we the way we used to write the mathematical notions and symbols it won't be taken into consideration because as we are shifting our process of traditional thinking into something modern something new so there will be a process and a change in the notions we write mathematical and uh, physical physics notations and symbols Remember that it took Einstein for 10 years to develop his theory along with several other specialists, geometers and mathematicians. So it would be an intense process which you are going, uh, going to take forward. Understand that it would be wrong to tell that Newton's law of gravity is not applicable or it is just that Newton's theory has been remodified and is now applicable to a much wider scale. So this is just a point of notion which you should understand that generally we always tell in mathematics or in school or even in college teachers uh, they generally cite this kind of a notion that Newton's law of gravity is wrong or it is not applicable. No, it is not like that. What we are trying to tell you is that Newton's theory has been remodified and has been generalized by Isaac, uh, Albert Einstein in the general theory of relativity. So it is not that Newton's law of gravity is not applicable. It is definitely applicable but to a different uh, scale and the general theory of relativity is applicable and it has been modified to a wider scale. Intuition and interpretation, well, what I would like to tell you is that often and on I have seen students coming up to me and telling that give me a basic intuitive approach of say Riemannian curvature tensor or geodesics. Well, intuition and interpretation are two uh, different things. What I'm trying to tell you through this is that you cannot escape the mathematics. You have to study mathematics. Without mathematics, you cannot get into anything which is expressed in mathematical forms so it is nothing which is called an intuitive approach if you are trying to make a intuitive approach to a mathematical object or a mathematical method that means you are making a mistake so intuition there is nothing called intuition you have to go you cannot escape the mathematics you have to go through it you have to uh, solve equations and understand what is the mathematical implication of that particular model Interpretation, once you understand the uh, mathematical uh, interpretation or the mathematical viewpoint, then definitely you can interpret just like the way I am doing. I am interpreting Einstein's field equations in a much more easier fashion so that general public can uh, understand it. So uh, intuition, well I would say it is wrong, there is nothing called an intuitive approach. Yes there is something called interpretation but that comes once you understand the deep mathematical sense of it. Yes, that is what I was trying. There is nothing called an intuitive approach. Intuitive approach is something very wrong. You have to go into the mathematics to understand it. There are different ways of writing signs and notation. Say for example, if you are taking Ricci scalar and we are writing R with subscripts A and B and we are writing R with subscripts alpha and beta, some may write R with subscript rho and sigma. So it is all the same but uh, we, what we would do is that we will try to follow the general accepted conventions so that whenever these type of symbols crop up in your mathematical books or your lectures you can easily understand it. So this is a good time that we should go ahead. Once the objectives have been laid down, this is the right time that we should go ahead. So this is my YouTube uh, channel, Physics for Students. I would request uh, everybody who is watching it, please subscribe and click on the bell notification to get all the notifications from this channel physics for students the subject of my next video is the architects of general theory of relativity so thank you for watching this video please do subscribe 
and like and you can comment if you feel anything that you need to discuss with me in the comment section so the next video would be the architects of general theory of relativity where we would know who are the contributors of general theory of relativity so good time to start thank you very much for watching the video stay safe stay happy and keep on watching physics for students